Chapter 11 Gifts to the World No time at all had passed in Frog Creek. The sky was lit by the orange afterglow of the sunset. Jack and Annie were wearing their jeans and jackets and sneakers again. The green velvet bag had changed back into Jack's backpack. Jack! Annie! Two voices called from the woods below. Jack and Annie looked out the window. Teddy and Kathleen stood in the shadows beneath them. Hi! Hi! Annie and Jack called. They quickly climbed down the rope ladder and hopped to the ground. We're glad to see you, said Annie. Why are you here? Before Teddy or Kathleen could answer, the leaves rustled, and out from the dark trees stepped Morgan Le Fay and Merlin the Magician. Morgan! Merlin! said Annie. Peep! Penny! said Jack. Waddling behind Merlin was the baby penguin Jack and Annie had given to Merlin after their trip to Antarctica. Peep! Kathleen picked up Penny and held the little penguin in her arms. Peep, peep! Jack and Annie laughed. How are you, Penny? asked Jack. She is wonderful, said Morgan. She is dearly loved in Camelot. I would say Penny has become the very heart of our kingdom. She hasn't gotten any bigger, said Jack. Merlin smiled. Time passes very slowly in Camelot, he said. Indeed, said Morgan. Camelot has hardly aged at all since we last saw you. But you have accomplished much in that time, said Merlin. You have completed your missions to help four artists give their gifts to the world. And from all we hear, said Morgan, you were as successful with Charles Dickens as you were with Lady Augusta Gregory. Louis Armstrong and Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. I guess we were, Jack said modestly. I loved Charles, said Annie. I loved all of them. I felt like we became good friends with them. Yeah, and I'm really sad that I, I won't see them again, said Jack. We thought you might feel that way, said Kathleen. Merlin and Morgan have something to show you, said Teddy. But first, may we have the magic violin and bow back? asked Kathleen. Oh, sure, said Jack. He reached into his backpack and pulled out the violin and bow. Teddy took the violin from him, and Kathleen took the bow. On your last four missions, you played a magic violin, a magic Irish whistle, a magic trumpet, and a magic flute, said Kathleen. Jack and Annie nodded. Do you remember where the magic came from? said Kathleen. She tossed the violin bow into the air. It was still for a moment. Then it began to twirl round and around. There was a flash of blue light. The violin and bow disappeared. Floating in the air was an object shaped like the spiraled horn of a unicorn. The wand of Dianthus, Jack and Annie said together. Yes, said Kathleen. She plucked the wand from the air and handed it to Merlin. Merlin closed his eyes. He waved the wand of Dianthus in a circle and whispered words Jack couldn't understand. There was a whoosh of sound, and they were all standing in the corner of Jack and Annie's street. Some people were walking by in the dusk. Jack looked worriedly at Merlin, Morgan, Taddy, Kathleen, and Penny. What would people say when they saw them? Do not worry, Morgan said, as if she could read Jack's mind. They see and hear only you and Annie. Listen carefully, said Merlin. Jack listened. Beautiful music was coming from a house on the corner. A string quartet is rehearsing for a Mozart concert at a church this Saturday, said Merlin. Oh, wow, said Annie. Merlin waved the wand in a circle and whispered more magic words. Whoosh! They were all standing outside a window of a large brick building. Inside, kids were playing trumpets, saxophones, and drums. Hey, it's the band room at the middle school, Jack said. Yes, the band is rehearsing a Louis Armstrong song for the Jazz Res Festival next week, said Morgan. Again, Merlin waved the wand in a circle and whispered magic words. Whoosh! They all stood at a window of a white wooden building. It's the Frog Creek Library, said Annie. Inside the library, a woman sat in an armchair, talking and waving her hands. Children sat at her feet, listening. A storyteller is telling Irish folk tales, said Kathleen. Stories collected by Augusta Gregory. Merlin waved the wand in a circle and whispered magic words again. Whoosh! 
They were all standing at the back of a dark auditorium. Actors were rehearsing on the stage. Back by popular demand, Teddy whispered. The Frog Creek Little Theater presents Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. <gasps> Yay! Can we go see it again? whispered Annie. Yes, and that is how you will visit Charles Dickens again, said Merlin. Charles Dickens, Lady Augusta Gregory, Louis Armstrong, Wolfgang Mozart, and all other great artists live on through their work, said Morgan. You put your four friends on the path to giving their gifts to the world, said Kathleen. And the world still receives their gifts, said Teddy. You've accomplished your mission, Merlin said to Jack and Annie. Thank you for helping bring happiness to millions. You're welcome, said Jack. No problem, said Annie. Jack turned back to the rehearsal of A Christmas Carol. The ghost of Christmas future had just left the stage and Scrooge was alone in his bedroom. The actor played Scrooge, started hopping about, laughing and crying in the same breath. I am as light as a feather, he shouted. I am as happy as an angel. Jack and Annie laughed as Scrooge's wild joy. Jack turned around to laugh with the others, but they were gone. Merlin, Morgan, Teddy, Kathleen, and Penny had all vanished. Where? Jack said. They must have gone home to Camelot, said Annie, but I'll bet we'll see them again soon. Jack nodded. We should go home too, he said. As Scrooge was shouting, Merry Christmas, to the world, Jack and Annie slipped out of the Frog Creek Little Theater. Then they ran through the cool autumn evening, heading for home. The End Thank you so much, Halflings, for joining me on this Christmas but spooky tale. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it was a great start to October, the start of all things spooky, right? Uh, if you enjoyed this story, please leave a like and stay tuned for the next read aloud. Take care, Halflings. Bye!